It is good to be with you this evening. I pray you all have had a wonderful day, and I uh, pray you are tuned in, and, and uh, we do miss you, and uh, hopefully here very soon we'll be back together again. And uh, we do ask that you would continue to pray for uh, our nation, pray for the situation at hand, uh, even when they do hopefully lift the uh, ability for us to come together and worship together. Um, obviously, there's, there's still work to be done yet and, and still situations so pray for america and pray for each other and again we do miss you and we do love you we are praying for each of you uh, just a few announcements a few requests uh, to uh, keep in mind um, jamie rutherford uh, which is rick's son there was hit by a car uh, he is in the hospital I don't have a lot of details, but he is obviously uh, needing prayer, physically speaking. Uh, Alistair McKinnon uh, and his wife, uh, missionaries in Scotland, uh, they do have that coronavirus and uh, do be praying for them. Uh, they would recover. Stephanie Ailes, uh, there is, she is off the ventilator, and she's recovering uh, from a car accident, for those that haven't heard. And uh, she did have surgery on her leg and uh, from the sounds of it uh, there's a long recovery period there so do pray for her that uh, healing and, and uh, this recovery would would be um, quicker than expected uh, and brother Hobie Johnson continue to remember him and keep him in your your prayers for health uh, obviously he, he needs uh, prayer there in Alberta as well and Tom and Linda Rayleigh, uh, Tom's not doing well, and so you just pray for them uh, not feeling well, so to help that, that uh, God would touch and heal them as well. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, Father, we thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. Again, it's such a privilege to, to be in your house, and Lord, I, I thank you, Father, for just your goodness and, and your kindness and that you show us and your mercy that, Lord, you bestow upon us. Lord, I thank you for each of our people, and Lord, it's so so um, it's honestly, it's a lonely feeling uh, seeing, not being able to see anyone, uh, obviously the seeing the faces of people and, and being able to talk with people and, and, and fellowship with people. Lord, it's, it's a blessing and you don't realize uh, what you have until it's gone. And, and Father, we're not able to be, if you will. And we pray that, Lord, you'd help us to get recovered and back here together quickly. I pray that you'd be with our people and Lord, our church family uh, and extended family and, and and those that are listening and Lord, I pray a blessing upon them. And I pray that you'd be with services here tonight. Thank you for the singing so far. And Lord, I pray that you just continue to bless uh, Lord the singing here, uh, the remainder of the service and bless the message tonight. Father, we thank you, Father. Again, watch over each and every one. Be with our missionaries. Be with uh, Lord, our leaders in, in this time. And, and uh, Lord, the decisions to, to be made there. Well, Lord, we thank you, Father, for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, lead me home. 
To the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, if you will, chapter number three. Well, we're sure glad to be here tonight, but we're sure missing you, as Brother Jason said. We're looking forward to that day uh, when we can meet together again in the house of God. What a privilege, what a pleasure that will be. We're hoping during this time that you're making the best of it. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, making a way to enjoy it at least. Now there's a few things that I'm not too fond of. Uh, one, they closed the barber shops down. And uh, my hair just keeps getting longer and longer. And uh, so, you know, I, I usually keep it cut pretty short. And uh, my wife hadn't said one thing about it. But I walked in the other night and she had two bags of brush rollers sitting on my dresser. And so I don't know how to take that, whether she's wanting me to use those hair rollers and trying to curl my hair or what. But I'll, I'll do most things for her, but I, I don't think this old boy is going to curl his hair. I'm too far along to start now. And be the first one there at the barber shop. Uh, I told someone there's a lot of be battles there, probably need police and all at the beauty shops and all, especially where women trying to get in and be the first one to get their hair fixed. But whatever may come, it will come. But tonight, I want you to think with me, and I'm just going to read a few verses here in Philippians chapter 3. And uh, I've entitled my message just simply two words, knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus. Yeah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, 
If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If you will, look once again at verse number 10, where I have taken my text from. Verse 10, the Apostle Paul speaking under inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. And Paul says that I may know him. The Apostle Paul was speaking many years ago. Many years ago, Paul has been through much. Paul has found the Lord to be faithful. And now, as an old man, the Apostle Paul says here, that I may know him. Here we see it in... 2020, I always thought 2020 was good vision. And here we are in 2020, and folks, we can't see anything. I mean, we don't know which way we're going, we've been, or anything else. But here in 2020, we said, and can I say to you tonight, I believe without a shadow of a doubt in America, in uh, New Zealand, in Papua New Guinea, in China, in Africa, I believe the greatest need 
in every nation under the face of the earth, the greatest need we have in the world today. Man's greatest need is to know Christ. Yeah, that's right. Paul said that I might know him. Now, God wants us. God wants us to know him better. I don't think God is too concerned about us just knowing all the facts about him. I had someone come in, oh, it's been a year or so ago, and come in and start talking to me, and man, he started rattling off, I mean, the different verses he knew, and it was a bunch of them, and thank God we need to learn the scriptures, we need uh, to learn these, but uh, then he tell me how many pages over that is, and he, he would tell me, I mean, he had a lot facts in his head but my friend just knowing the facts isn't really knowing something or someone now we years ago where my wife worked at Wright Patterson Air Force Base <coughs> she was a secretary uh, there and there was men from different countries <coughs> that were working for the foreign technology division there. And uh, these, I mean, these men were smart, uh, you would think. <coughs> but there was one of these men uh, on his lunch hour, he would sit and memorize the dictionary. I mean, from the first of the dictionary, <coughs> he was working on learning it all the way through. If you ask him what a, a certain word meant, I mean, he could tell you what page it was on the dictionary. I mean, he had it all. But these were head facts. These were here. You know, you can know a lot about people and not know them. I, I can tell you, and I'm, I, I was never too good in school, but I, I, I learned a lot. You know, I learned who the first president was. <laughs> Mr. Washington, and you know, I, I can tell you he was the first president. I could probably tell you a few other things about him, but you know what? I didn't really know him. I never met him. I didn't know him. The Bible says that we need to know more about Christ than just that he was God's son. Now that we need to know. We need to know that. But this word know is to experience a close personal relationship with him. I want to know him. These words here, these are the same words that's used for the close relationship between the husband and uh, a wife. That they might know them, know them close and personal. Now, my wife and I have been married now 57 years. And... Uh, Seems like a long time in a way, another way, it don't seem uh, very long. But 57 years ago, last month, she became my wife. I learned a lot of things. One, I learned, you know, the preacher always says, who giveth this woman to this man? And I didn't understand it. But I tell you, I, I don't think he gave her to me. I think I've paid a high price in these 57 years. Uh, uh, in some of our countries, they have to pay, a, a, I believe it's called a dowry. And uh, one of our boys is a missionary in Papua New Guinea cost him I believe it was two thousand dollars and ten pigs uh, in order to get his wife so I mean there, there's a price to be paid but I, I, I learned there uh, a lot of things I knew about her we had dated for uh, probably 
probably two years. But the day that we stood in an altar, the day that we got married and the preacher finally said that she was my bride. You see, she was now mine. She had never been mine until this time. Right. She was mine personally. And my friends, then uh, I got to come to her to know her. Uh, and for 57 years, we've had the privilege of getting to know each other better. Yeah. Now, you don't learn about somebody in a few days, and a few months, and really a few years. Uh, in the last uh, five, six years, I've had some physical problems. And while I had the physical problems, and thank God he's been so good to me and uh, has brought me along and uh, taken care of me. But humanly, my wife uh, has been the one. I mean, my, uh, the work that uh, she does, she, she literally takes care of me. Uh, you know, I, as a young husband, we never thought about this. As a young wife, we never thought about these things. But as the years go by, we began to get to know each other better. Now, this time at home, we're having and people trying to figure what they're going to do. And uh, I hear where they're inventing games and people's playing games back and forth with other people on the uh, internet and on the Facebook and all that. They say they have nothing to do. Well, I don't know about that. I, I just love to sit and be with my wife and talk to her and still get to know her better. But the Apostle Paul said that I might know him. Yeah. Paul had a great desire to get to know God. Uh, but see, remember, child of God, we can never really know him until he is ours. And that's honestly how much God wants us to know him. As these 57 years, we have grown to know each other. Alan and I, in these 55 years that I've been saved, we have learned to come to Christ and to get to know him better. Oh, my friend, I believe there's some reasons that we need to know him. I believe Jesus wants us to know him. I believe Jesus wants the four point, or excuse me, the 7.4 billion people today to know him because I he can give them a better life. You know, God loves you. God loves these people. Uh, God loves every one of us. And the truth be, none of us are very lovable, but yet God loves us. The Apostle Paul said in 3, 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. The Apostle Paul says that nothing, that nothing could be better than knowing Jesus. You see, Paul, he knew all about religion. I think it was Jason a week or two ago spoke some on that in, in, in his message. But Paul was a very, very religious man, as we've just read through here. But Paul uh, knew something was yet missing. He uh, he, he was a re as religious as anybody could be. Uh, no one could have been more religious than the Apostle Paul was. But Paul realized something. He realized that anything that he had, all his religion, all of uh, his education, all of these things 
was only trash compared to the treasure of knowing Jesus Christ. And God wants us to know, my friend, friend, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever position that you may have, God wants us to know that there is no earthly achievement that can, can compare to the excellency of knowing Christ. Jesus wants us to know him, to know him, because he can give us a better life. <laughs> you know, God loves us. Amen. God loves us. Amen. Oh, my friend, I say to you, people today need a better life. Oh, as you look around, you find, uh, really, you find not a whole lot of happy people. You don't find a whole lot of people that are, are thrilled with life, that enjoy life, and uh, always wanting to reach out for something else. So many of them uh, on the bottle and on the pill and uh, on and on and on and their, their lives right. are miserable. Right. You know, the Lord wants them to know that he can give them a better life. Right. There's not a person in this world that God cannot give them a better life than what they have today if they will only come to him. Young people, uh, mom and dad, realize no matter what you gain in life through your religion, through your achievements and all, you're not going to get a better life than you can get with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a life! What a time. The second thing is, I believe Jesus wants us to know him because he can give us eternal life. Amen. You see, he, don't only get, he doesn't only give us a better life. He gives us an eternal life. Philippians 3, 9, and be found in him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Here the Apostle Paul was speaking about God's gift of eternal life, talking about being saved and that eternally. Paul realized that his own righteousness, now all that he had, his education, his religion, everything that he had, he realized that they was only as filthy rags. No good, filthy rags. And Paul was relying totally, not on them, but totally in faith in the finished works of Jesus Christ. He realized, he realized his need of God's merciful love as much as the worst sinner on earth. Paul knew what all he had and he was all the religion. He, he knew all of that. But Paul now, you see, when the Lord gets a hold of you, you don't see how good you are. You see the truth the way God sees us. And Paul realized how wretched and undone he really was. Oh, my friends, you see, Paul had a lot, but what what if a person is a little bit better than someone else? Or what if a person is a whole lot better than someone else? Right. In God's eyes, they're still guilty of sin. That's right. Still guilty and still condemned. Right. You see, that's why we must depend on Christ's righteousness to make us right with God. Our goodness, whether it's like Paul's or like the goodest person to ever been on earth, my friend, it's not enough. It's not enough. And the only way to have God's righteousness in this life is through faith 
in Jesus Christ. We need to have faith that the Bible is true. We need to have faith that this is God's book. Amen. This doesn't contain God's word. This is God's word. And we need to have faith in this book. And we need to have faith in what this book says about sin and sinners. And this book says for all have sin. And my friend, that includes me and that includes you. And we must have faith that is true, and we must stand upon it. Amen. We must have faith that God loves us in spite of our sins. Amen. You see, God loves us in spite of who we are and what we are and what we have done. Where we've been, God loves you and I. God so loved the world. The Bible tells us we need to have faith that God loves sinners. Oh, I'm glad of that. <laughs> I'm glad he loves sinners because that means that he loved me. We need to have faith that God became man to come to this earth and live a perfect life and die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Where the Bible tells us this, we need to believe it. We need to understand that God sent his son down here to this earth. And my friend, he lived a perfect life and he went to Calvary to pay a debt he did not owe to pay our debt one we could not pay and my friends when Jesus went to the cross when he was on that cross I was on his mind Amen. you see he loves us my friend we must have faith that God loves us Amen. we must have faith that Jesus arose from the grave. You see, millions and millions of folks had died before that time and have died since that time. But I tell you what, right outside of Jerusalem that morning, there was the only resurrection that a man arose to live forevermore. And we must have faith in that. You see, faith in the resurrection is a necessity as far as salvation because it is part of the gospel, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ from the grave. And we must have faith that Christ arose from the dead. And we must have faith that Jesus will forgive all our sins and will give us eternal life if we will receive him as our Savior. You see, folks, this book we have faith in, that's what it tells us. If we will confess unto the Lord that we are a sinner, if we will come to him realizing what he has done for us at the cross and through the tomb, if we will come to him confessing that we are sinners, if we will simply trust him, he will save our soul. My friend, I remember the day I got saved. <clears throat> what a day. What a day. October the 31st, 1965. You say, preacher, that sounds like Halloween. Oh, it was. A lot of people don't like that day, but I remember well <laughs> the day that God saved me. And my friend, I had nothing to bring to him. I had nothing to give to him. I had nothing that he needed. But he said he loved me. He said he took my place and died for me and rose again. And my friend, I simply said, Lord, Lord, save me. And you know what? The Lord saved me that day. Amen. He made a difference in my life. Oh, that day was a different day. <laughs> it's been different Amen. ever since. Thank God. What did Roy Maple do? 
I done nothing except receive what Jesus done for me. And say, friend, that's what you must do, is receive and accept what the Lord's done for you. And when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. I mean, he forgives us all of our sins. All of our sins, no matter how many there ever was, he forgave us of all of those sins when we trust in him. He puts his righteousness then into our spiritual account. What he did, his righteousness now become mine. His righteousness is mine. And we are born again. At that moment, we are given eternal life. And that eternal life only exists through knowing Jesus Christ in a personal way. Now we hear Paul say there that I may know him, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. My friend, Jesus wants us to know him. You see, he gave us eternal life if you've trusted in him. If you've, he has given you eternal life, and he wants us to know him. Know him. There is no eternal life outside of knowing Jesus in a personal way because there's no other way to know the Father in heaven. Amen. Oh, my friend, eternal life comes the moment that we receive Christ as our Savior. Eternal life does not come in trying to keep God's rules. Because, you see, we cannot keep them all. There's no eternal life in religious things. There's no uh, eternal life in things like coming to church. Boy, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that... Uh, you don't have to be in church to be saved. And uh, though we realize the church is not a building, the church is that born-again group, of local group of baptized believers. Amen. We know that. But a lot of people think they got to go through the church. Well, what about those people that would die in the hour where the church is closed down? But you see, really, uh, going to church can't take you to heaven. It never could, and it never would will. Being baptized will not get you eternal life. And believing and being baptized will not get you eternal life. Um, uh, reading your Bible, even though we need to daily, will not uh, give you that eternal life and even praying as we ought to. But you see, eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus is the gift of God. He is the gift of God. And my friend, we don't pay nothing. Jesus paid it all. But because we love him, then we ought to want to know him. Amen. Jesus wants us to know him because, my friend, of what he can give us after that. Now think about it. Paul said, not as though I had already attained, either we're already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth into those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the, high, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Here we see Paul and Paul's strength, the strength that Paul had and what Paul could do. He said it was in Christ, and it's through Christ. 
You see, Christianity is not Roy Maples living or your living. Christianity is when Christ lives his life through us. And my, what he can do. What he can do for us and what he can do with us and what he can do through us. Now, we find that when Paul got saved, he had a new energy. Uh, a new energy that he could do things uh, the Lord or yielded and the Lord do through him. We find that Paul's energy that he had helps him to remember. Remember, Paul's in a tough situation. As Paul was writing this, Paul was in the prisons. And he was in the dungeon, if you will. And he had been there for a while. In chapter 1, Paul tells us that he is a prisoner of the Lord, a prisoner for the Lord. Now, we find that Paul was in chains, and he, he had been in those chains, wearing those for a while. And Paul did not really know what was going to happen. Paul did not know if he would be getting out of prison. He did know, not know if he would be living or if he would be dying. But that's chapter 1. You come to chapter 2, and Paul was going through some uh, extreme troubles here and terrible times. But yet in the midst of it, in verse number 12, the apostle Paul, said, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. As an old song says, I'm pressing on the upward way. But Paul said, I'm pressing on. Child of God, today God wants us to press on. I know times are terrible. I I realize it, like in Paul's day, he realized it, but he said, I'm pressing on. Christians, today, in the midst of everything going on, it's not time to sit down and cry. It's not time to just complain and gripe and all. It's time to press on uh, for the cause of Christ. And God will give us that energy to press on. Today, if you're weak, Press on. If you're weary, press on. If you're worried, press on. If you're weeping, press on. Press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We need to we need to press on. Amen. We come to chapter three in the midst of all this. Now Paul being an older man and an old man, if you will, and I mean that in the right way. But you know, Paul has one desire that we know of. Paul says that he wants to know Christ better, to know him better. You see, you'll never really know Christ until you receive him as your Savior. You may know about him. You see, I knew about Christ before I was saved, but I didn't know Christ. You would think in America that everybody didn't know Christ. Many, many years ago, I had an old preacher with us. This is when I was pastoring in New Carolina. Uh, an old preacher, evangelist, uh, who was well known, traveled the world. And him and I went into a house to visit. And remember a young man about somewhere about 18 years old, I think he was a senior in high school. We asked this man a question. And now this was a woman who had been coming to church. We asked her son, do you know Jesus? And this man, this boy said, I don't think so. We said, you haven't heard of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? The young man said, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. And I thought, in America, I mean, 10 miles, in fact, 6 miles probably from our church. Mother come to church. And father, if I remember right, was a drunkard and so forth. But he knew not Jesus Christ. 
My friends, it's sad when people don't know him. But I knew about him very little. But I didn't know him until that day he saved my soul. Amen. And I tell you, the day he gave and saved me, he gave me a far better life Amen. than I'd had before. And I had a good life to look forward to. Because the life he gave me was an eternal life. And because the life he gave me, it was an energized life. He, he, he gave me the strength to do what he wanted me to do. He always does. Question tonight is, do you know him? Do you know Jesus? Not about him, but do you know him? If not, then you need to receive Christ as your Savior. Yeah. Accept him, what the finished works he did for you. He paid your sin debt. And my friend, God has already accepted the payment that he made for your sin. You must receive him, and you must receive the payment he made, and you must trust him as your Savior. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Yeah. Knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus, to know him is to love him. Amen. You know, as I said, my wife and I have been married 57 years. You know, the more the longer I know her, the more I love her. Yeah. My friend, if we want to love and know Jesus, we must spend time with him. Yeah. Preacher, what about Jesus should we know? Well, just think with me for a moment. Number one, Jesus reflects the glory of God. I've got a whole lot of things I like to say. I can't take time to say it. But he reflects the glory of God. You know, Jesus, Jesus now, he is the express image of God. He is God. The book says in Hebrews that he is the express image of God. In the book of John chapter 10, it tells us that Jesus is co-equal with God. When we see Jesus, when we know him, we know God. Amen. He is God. Jesus, that we might know him. You see, Jesus is all sufficient. If you will remember, he was there in the beginning, and he'll still be around. I wouldn't say in the ending, but there will be no ending. But he is, my friend, he is all sufficient. The Bible says that he is Alpha, and he is Omega. He is the beginning, and he is the end. And he is the ancient of days that I might know him. He is the sovereign one. He is the supreme one. Yes, he is the eternal one that I might know him. He's a savior. He's the sustainer. And thank God he's the satisfier of the human heart. He is the redeemer. He is the regulator. He is the ruler of the human race. Can I just throw this in? My friend, he's still in control in 2020. He's still in control. And that's why I can sleep pretty good at night. Amen. Not because I know what's going to happen, but because I know who is in control and is the ruler. I want you to know that Jesus was. He he was, he is, and he shall forever.
forever be. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the master of time and eternity. He is the Lord of life, and he is the conqueror of death. He is the keeper of our hearts, and he is the caretaker of our souls. He saves us when we're lost. He strengthens us when we are weak. He walked with Adam in the Garden of Eden at the dawn of creation. He sailed with Noah in the ark of safety when the flood waters of God's judgment covered the earth. He communed with Abraham on the plains of memory and made covenant with him that can never be annulled. He suffered with Joseph in the prisons of Pharaoh and he brought him out to become the prime minister of Egypt. Jesus spoke with Moses on the mount of God and he identified himself. He got to know him there and we find that Jesus told him, God told him and said, I am the great, the great I am. All oh, to know him. We find that he marched with Joshua around the walls of Jericho and he caused them to fall down flat. He wrestled with Samson against the Philistines and brought victory to his people. He gleamed with Ruth in the fields of Boaz and gave her handfuls on purpose. He counseled with Samuel in the chambers of Israel and guaranteed him security. He fought with David against Goliath, and he demonstrated the bravery of youth. He labored with Solomon in the building of the temple, and he called it the house of God. He rode with Elijah in the whirlwind uh, to heaven, accompanied by 20,000 chariots of God. He breathed with Elijah on the dead son of the widow and brought him back to life again. He watched with Daniel in the den of lions and brought him out unscathed and unscratched. He strode with the Hebrew children through the fire furnace and delivered them without even the smell of smoke. He comforted Peter in the prison house of Herod and he designated him as the apostle to the Jews. He crossed with Paul over the stormy waters of the Mediterranean Sea and he brought him safely to his designated port. He consoled John there on that lonely isle of Patmos and he gave him there the revelation, the book of the revelation of things to come. Oh, that we might know him, that we might know him. My friend, you need to know him. Remember this, you can't outlive him. You can't outlive him and you sure don't want to live without him. Amen. Especially when it comes to crossing over. My friends, today, remember this. The one Paul said that I might know him. The one that this old preacher says that I might know him. That I might know him. He is the one that has always been and he always will be. He was the one that's met every need that any person ever brought to him. And he's the one that will take care of the future. Oh, we don't know what's gonna happen down the short roads ahead. But my friend, we sure do know who's in control of it all. Amen. Paul said that I might know him better. Oh, my friend, 70, uh, or at the age of 70, I don't know how old I am, 76 years old, I guess. I'm not sure. Married 57 years. 
And my friend, as I said, every day I get to know my wife better. And the better I know her, the more I thank God for her, and the more I love her. 55 years, I met Jesus. And my friend, the songwriter wrote every day with Jesus. It's sweeter than the day before. Oh, I've learned a few things about him. But I tell you what, I, if I could live a billion lives on this earth, I don't think I could ever learn everything about Jesus. But I'm sure glad of what I know. And my friends, I wouldn't trade him for anything, anyone, anytime. He's my Savior. I'm his child. I'm the child of God. I'm thankful for that. Whoever you are, wherever you are tonight, I ask you that. Are you God's child? I didn't say God's creation. God's the creator of all men. He's the father of those who receive him as Savior. To those who believe on his name, to those who gave him power to become, the sons of God. Would you trust in him tonight and be saved? In Christians, let's draw closer to our Lord. Let's be with the Apostle Paul and say that our great desire is that we might know him, that we might know him better than ever before. Whatever you need tonight, Jesus is the answer Amen. as we pray father so thankful for that day you saved me lord so thankful for that day that you gave me a better life that day you saved my soul and gave me eternal life nor that day that you took this old hunk of flesh and energized that we might be able to do even a little bit of what you want us to do. We know we made it so we can do everything you want us to do. But Lord, sometimes we fail you. But Lord, I'm glad you never fail us. And I pray tonight, Lord, for those that are without you, that this evening, right now, where they are, that they may turn to you and confess to you, dear Lord, I am a sinner. And Lord, I realize that I can't save myself. And Lord Jesus, today, would you please save me? The Bible says if we'll trust him, he will save our souls. And my friend, if you will do that today, he will do for you what he did for me in 19... 65, wrote my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I become his child. The songwriter said, his child forever I am. Lord, touch every heart. Lord, be with our people. And, oh, God, if it be in thy will, hasten the day, the hour, that we can meet back together here in the house of God. And Lord, thank you for the assurance that one day we can meet with thee there in heaven one day. In your name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.